Hi everyone and welcome back to Game Maker Cast. and in this video we're going to be creating a day-night cycle using a shader and a little bit of code. Let's roll the introduction and get right into it. So I have my sample project in front of me here. If I go to the room you can see I basically just have an asset. It's a big image and then I have one instance of my object here which is just an object day-night. Inside this object, it's completely empty, but this is what we're going to use to control the cycle. But the first thing we actually need to do is create a new shader for the day-night cycle. So we will name this shader SH Day-Night, and we'll maximize it so we can read the code here. We're going to be using the vertex shader alone. However, we need the fragment shader, which is going to be the different colors. There's a few things that we need to do. We first need to decide on a day color and a night color. Now remember, when dealing with shaders, colors are going to be between zero and one. So one being white and zero being completely black. So I've chosen these two colors for my day and night. The next variable we need is a value that's going to tell us how much to mix between the two cycles, between the two colors. I'm gonna call mine time of day. Now getting into the actual shader code, we need to currently grab the pixel color based off of our base texture and the coordinates. Once we have the current pixel color, we need to choose a color between the day and the night color. Luckily enough, we can use the mix function, pass in the colors, and then the time of day, which is a value between zero and one to mix a new color. The last thing we need to do, instead of return the current pixel color, what we will do is take the current pixel color, the red, green, and blue channels, and multiply it with a color that we found above by mixing the night and day color. I'm going to keep the original alpha color to pass through in the end. And this is the entire day night shader right here. So let's switch over to our object and see how we can actually use this. Now for my object, I'm going to use a create event. I'm also going to use a step event. And finally, I'm going to use a draw and then post draw event. The reason I'm using the post draw event is because we need to draw the application surface ourselves. The application surface is basically the last thing that gets drawn and it's what the user will see. Because I wanna apply the entire scene to the day night shader, we need to draw ourselves. This means in the create event, what we're going to do is actually disable drawing that event. And we can do that by using an application surface draw enable and then set a false value. So if we were to run our game right now, nothing would be drawn to the screen and it would be completely black because that's up to us to draw it. The other thing I also want to do is I want to use a time of day variable and I'll set this to zero. Now in the step event, there's a couple things that we could do. We could either have the time of day continue counting or I'm going to be using the mess coordinates based off of the screen just to move it from the daytime to nighttime a little bit faster. So this means I will take the mess coordinate for the X position and divide it by the room width. This will give me a number between zero and one. And then the rare occasion that the number is a negative or above one, I'm just gonna make sure that I clamp it so it can only be between those two values. Now in the post draw event, we need to do a couple things. The first thing we need to do is set the shader to our day night shader instead of the regular pass through shader that comes with Game Maker. Next, I need to actually add our information into the variable found in our shader. This uniform float time of day expects us to add the information in through the object. We can do this using a shader set uniform F. Now, if you were thinking of optimization, you would probably store this information in the step event and then access it by the handle. Since this is just a quick tutorial, it's fine to do it this way. So we are going to access the shader day night, access the time of day variable, and then pass in the information based off of our object. The next thing we need to do is we actually need to draw the surface. And in our case, we're drawing the application surface at the top left corners, at the top left corners. Finally, what we'll do is a shader reset here. And that is complete. Now, if I run my game using the particular shader, when I have my mouse all the way over to the left, you can see that it's nice and bright. When I start moving it over to the right, you can see that it's dimming down to the night colors that we chose. If you don't want to use the mouse coordinates exactly, what you could do is you could come to the step event and instead of using the mouse coordinates, we'll set the time of day to plus equal one. I'm going to comment out this information and then in the post draw, obviously this needs to be between zero and one. So using a little bit of math, 
we could take the time of day, add it into a new temporary variable, and then to get it to go up and down, we can use the sign function. Now, the problem with this is this is going to give us a number between negative one and one, and we don't really want that. So what we could do is I created a new function here called sign underscore ext. If we check it out, we're using the start value that we pass in plus the end minus the start times the signed value of delta plus one divided by two. Now, basically, you can end up just copying this with this bunch of math. It gives us the ability to say I want to use this variable between the numbers of zero and one. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to slow down the time variable and replace it into my shader. Now, if I hit F5, instead of using my mouse, we're going to use a time of day between zero and one. If you wanted to make it slower, all you have to do is decrease this or increase this to whatever you want, and that will make the time slower. You could also decrease the amount of information you are adding each time, but you can see that it is currently working. I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, thank you for watching the video. A special shout out to my Patreon supporters in no particular order. Victor, Ashby, Paul, Bear, and Game Maker community. Thank you everyone for the support. If you liked the video, just click that button. Otherwise, subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you in the next one.